Joining me now is Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, Democrat from Michigan's 7th Congressional District, which includes Lansing. Congresswoman, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, first, let me just get your response to President Trump, or former President Trump, tonight calling um, undocumented migrants animals. I mean, you know, look, I think it's it's deeply, deeply inappropriate for anyone who's a leader to set that kind of tone. Um, I think it falls on deaf ears. He obviously was making fun of people asking him not to refer to immigrants as animals. And I think the the unbelievable situation where this is, we are a nation of immigrants, right? He had family members who immigrated here from somewhere. Um, it, it just is, um, and it's sadly like a tale as old as time in the United States, right? There were times where Italian immigrants and Irish immigrants and name it, um, immigrants were called animals in the past. We've seen this movie, it's meant to divide us um, and meant to drum up fear and, and anger against other people. So uh, it, I, it falls on deaf ears to say anything about it. He's proud of it and all his allies stood behind him um, and we're proudly smiling while he was calling immigrants animals. It's a, it's a pretty sad state of affairs over there right now. Setting aside the poisonous rhetoric here, I do wonder about Trump and the Republican Party's efforts to drum up fear about the border and really the southern border, not the Canadian border in a state like Michigan. They feel like they're playing some kind of winning strategy here. Is there any credibility to that? Well, look, in Michigan, you know, we are a border state, so we know what a healthy functioning border looks like. And I think we need to acknowledge that no one thinks the southern border is, you know, great right now. No one says that this is how business should be running at our southern border. And, you know, as someone who was a former CIA officer and Pentagon official, spent my entire career in homeland security, I don't, no one likes what's going on down there. I think the question is, um, why is it that Donald Trump isn't letting Republicans negotiate on some sort of bill so that we can deal with the southern border. And I think that's what just drives many of us, um, you know, crazy is that he comes in, he'll do a big rally, he'll drum up all this energy, he'll lie, he'll call people animals, but then he stopped the Republicans from negotiating with us on a deal. We had a bipartisan deal. And so, I, you know, I, I come from the Pentagon and national security. If I would have said to any of my bosses, here's this number one national security issue, we've got to take care of it, we're vulnerable but let's not do anything for another nine months because I need to make some political hay out of it, I'd be fired. It'd be dereliction of duty. And he does it every single day. And all the my Republican colleagues who say they're worried about it, then get in a room with us. I'm willing to listen to anybody and negotiate anything. Um, but they're refusing to even meet with us on it. So I, I just, he, this guy is not, he's not serious about doing anything in the Southern border. He's serious about trying to win an election. And it's, well, it's frankly a little disturbing. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, in addition to the lack of sort of seriousness about policy and fixing the problem on a policy level, he's also very clearly trying to divide the country, right? I mean, I do wonder if Democrats are not leaving um, some money on the table, if you were, by not going harder after Trump on the race piece, just because he very clearly is saying non-whites are poisoning the blood of the country. I mean, the, the, the racism and the xenophobia is embedded in the message. You know, Trump has seen gains among Latinos and black voters in this country. And I just wonder if the, there's not some sort of way for Democrats to carve out that support and bring it back across their side of the aisle by focusing on the inherently, you know, bigoted message that is central to Trump's campaign. Yeah, I just I think um, he he's bigoted. He knows that he's proud of it. He talked about it today in this rally. Um, uh, so I, it's just the problem is, you know, we, we are used to a world where people feel shame, right, where people do something wrong. They feel shame and they embarrass. They're embarrassed and they do something about it. They apologize. He just doesn't feel shame. Donald Trump does not feel shame. So it's just a very difficult thing um, to highlight when he just keeps doing it, keeps repeating it. Um, yes, of course, uh, I think it's the, the job of, of all of us who care about the country to highlight what he's saying in his own words he will do if he becomes president again. You don't have to make up scenarios for what he will do. He's telling us every day. Today in the same rally in Michigan, he said, if I don't win this election, it's probably going to be our last election in this country. Yeah. I mean... So we don't have to make it up. We ha and it's our job to to help 
um, shine a light on that for people who might be interested in voting for him. What do you make of President Biden's outreach? I mean, he's focused intently on Michigan. He was on the picket line with striking UAW workers. Um, he has the endorsement of the UAW. He's done some, there's been some real, um, you know, retail politicking that's happened on the part of the president in that state. Is that going to be, I mean, does, does that work get outshined by the fear and loathing that Trump sort of like uh, conveys and brings with him when he arrives in town? Or do you think Biden has a good operation there structurally and rhetorically? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think the Biden operation has uh, come in in force in the state. They're there, they're hiring, they're opening offices, they're visible, um, which I think is important. But look, I don't think it's any one visit. I don't think it's any one rally by President Trump. I don't think it's it's um, any one thing. I think if you're in the in Michigan or in the Midwest, you got to be speaking to people's pocketbooks and their kids. You got to be talking about what you're going to do for their pocketbooks and their kids, particularly with the economy right now. You need to make you know, the case. And for me, I always think of Michiganders in particular as very practical people. We we know what we can see with our own eyes. And right now in Michigan, we have a manufacturing renaissance going on. We have an electric vehicle battery plant going up in my district. We've got 40 plus new factories in the state of Michigan after 40 years of not building a new one. Um, so people can see dirt moving, and I think that that matters to people. But it's it's not any one visit of someone flying in. It's making the case every single day in, in ways that compel people um, and are connected to what they really care about, their pocketbooks and their kids. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.